Well, yeah, it's that time again. Twenty twenty begins. Let's get this bad boy up to temperature. Right, so I have to quick tidy up. I know the lights are out. It's just I just thought I'd film it with lights out because it's a little bit different. So the snake's still laying. Uh, lights are out. Just been sweeping up and tidying up. It's a little bit messy. Got my incubation box ready, but now I need to put it back in the incubator. Uh, but the, uh, the, uh, the, the point of this part of the video is the temperature is at 88.5 and 88.3. So it's obviously just doing its final settling. So for those of you who are relatively new, uh, to incubation and stuff like that. Uh, when your when your temperature probe and you must get a thermometer, you must get a thermometer that records temperature. And uh, what I mean by that is not just displays it like this display here, but also tells you the highest it's ever got since you last reset it and the lowest. Now this is at 88.5, I'm going to hold that down to reset all the parameters. So now I know that everything, forget this bit, the humidity ma ma makes no difference in this incubator because obviously the humidity is within the boxes. But I know now that this thermometer is at 88.5 and 88.5, highest and lowest. So now when I leave it, if I check it later and this has changed, I know the incubator is still settling so it's very, very easy for me to check it. So come out of there, it's so hot. So still 88.5, so perfect. So I'm gonna leave that for a little bit longer. We'll check her again, see if she's finished. So very excited about this clutch because it is my absolute, yeah, she's finished, look, she's in her coil. She's got her eggs all wrapped up so i'll sort her out soon but really excited about this clutch because she is a very beautiful pastel heck clown sister to uh, my past my two pastel clowns which um one of them is here as you can see she's nice and chunky oh sorry about camera angle one's there and then one is down here i should really have them all together but the reason uh, and there's a pool up so i need to clean that out the reason uh, she's sort of like the big red one. The other, if you remember how she looks, the other is a bit brighter where she's actually going into shed, as you can see. Her eyes are a little bit opaque. So, uh, she's my A grade one. She's the one that produces the majority of my whole back and her, hit, her sister, the one who's laying, is also a fantastic colour. So, the reason I don't have them all together, because when I was designing all these racks and putting all the snakes together, I had like clown 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 pastel clown pastel clown etc etc all in in order and then i thought well if i take one away and sell it rehome it do what you know whatever take it away then i'm gonna have a gap so then i have to rejiggle everything so what i did after spending hours uh, on paper uh, laying it all out making it all prim and proper and everything kind of yeah all my clowns together all my pies together you know blah 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 i thought no <laughs> bollocks to this and I just ran them in everywhere. So we've got, you know, uh, from, uh, we've got from pieds to ivories to Mojave Ghost, Posset Clowns, uh, Heck Clown Pieds, Visual Clown Pieds, Engine Caligo, completely random. And that's the way now that I do it. So if I sell something, I don't have to rejiggle everything. And that's just the way I do it. And then there's my mails. And I'm gonna order another rack uh, so back doing YouTube videos. It feels fantastic to be back. Uh, I really needed that break like I've explained I just needed time to kind of work out if What I wanted from YouTube uh, Make sure I'm happy doing it because I do spend too long editing my videos because I'm not an editing genius It just takes longer than it should so really excited to bring this clutch uh, to you and to show you it and then I'm gonna now clean the green tree pythons out uh, sort this clutch out, sort the clutch out first, clean green tree pythons second, uh, uh, prep this egg box which I'll film and then I'll somehow wrap this video up, so stay tuned. Hi guys, I'm Paul from Urban Constrictors. Uh, super excited to bring you another video and I'm going to be a little bit more consistent now. I'm not going to promise uh, every Tuesday I'm going to do a two minute Tuesday just yet. 
and every Thursday I'm gonna release, release a video, but I'm gonna try my best. I don't wanna put too much pressure on myself because the truth is this this Christmas just gone, I know Christmas seems so long, long ago, but it was like 35 days ago. Um, this Christmas was the first Christmas in 10 years that I've been able to cut away from work completely, apart from maintaining my snakes, but I don't really see this as work. I, I, I still see it as my hobby. So I was able to cut away from my shop. My wife cut away from her salon because she has a team of people that manage the salon. I have a team of people that manage my shop. So I basically completely let my hair down and relaxed and, and kind of cut off from so much work that I do for the shop and other things. Uh, I just, I just kind of almost enjoyed it too much that I almost didn't want to do YouTube. I didn't want to, I didn't want to do certain things because I thought, oh, it's going back to work. So I decided to let the kids go back to school and then jump back on my jobs. And once I did, I realized I've created a backlog of jobs. So I had to put YouTube in the back seat and just wait. Now, as time went on, I just thought I just can't be bothered to do YouTube. I enjoy it and I love bringing content out, but I just really struggled for bringing something worth for you to watch until today. So I knew this female was close to laying, so I checked her this morning before I got on with so many jobs and I could see she was laying a clutch, as you've seen already. So now she's finished, it's about 1.32 p.m. Incubator to temperature like that. That this morning was uh, 71 or whatever it said on the thermometer, 71 Fahrenheit. Now it's 88.5 and rock solid. It took about two hours to warm up. I warmed up nice and slowly because I think I don't want to put too much pressure on the electricity. I didn't want to put too much pressure on just getting it to temperature. So I opened the door, turned it on, let some of the warm air uh, mix with the cold air in there, push some of the cold air out using the exhaust fan. That's there to uh, safeguard it should it ever overheat. And then just basically let the oil fill radiator just warm up slowly. So it's now warmed up. The incubator is just phenomenal. It's just two hours and poof, it's just absolutely rock solid. So, uh, really excited to bring you this clutch. So what my plan was for this video is we'll take the eggs away from the mother. I'll show you it for every step in the way, mixing the water, mixing the vermiculite, I explain what I do and why. And I've done videos like this, but every year my techniques are evolving and changing and just doing different things. And then videos to come, I've got some cool uh, stuff to show you. Uh, I've started my second sleeve, so as you know, I've got one arm full of good tattoos and one arm full of terrible tattoos. So yesterday I sat from, basically I got to the tattoo, it's at 10 past 10 in the morning, but he didn't get started till just after 12. And I sat till half past eight, quarter nine, and just sat rock solid, getting eight hours worth of tattooing. So I know a lot of you have been interested in tattoos and talked to me about them, so I will show it off when, once it's healed. It's currently got a product called the Second Skin, and it's, it's a fantastic product. Basically, it's like sticky plastic. You stick it all over your tattoo once it's once you've finished for the day, once it's had 10 to 15 minutes of drying, and it just protects it, and it stops the scabbing. Uh, it stops all the scabbing. You have it on for four days, and what's weird is anyone that's had a, an extensive work of tattoos, and this was a cover-up, and it's predominantly black, so there's a lot, a lot of deep shading and a lot of penetration for the skin. What's crazy is I don't feel like I've had a tattoo done. As you know, I'm covered in tattoos. And this is the very first tattoo in my whole life that I've had the next day feeling like I haven't had a tattoo. It's it's absolutely crazy. It goes all the way up, up here. It's just unbelievable. So if any of you are getting big tattoos done, ask the tattooist if he uses a product called Second Skin. And if he doesn't, I'd strongly recommend you look into buying your own if you're gonna get more work done. Fortunately for me, my tattooist did. Because now uh, I'll have every tattoo wrapped like this. So in four days, I'll soak in the bath and you can shower and bath and everything just like normal. You just go about your day like normal. Keeps it clean, keeps it protected, stops it scabbing. So in four days, I'll soak in bath and peel it off. He said it does stick to the skin, but it doesn't stick to the tattoo. Peel it off, the job's good. I know that kind of not snake oriented, but I just like to share good things because if you're having a new, if you're having a tattoo done, uh, I would strongly recommend having lots of tattoos. Uh, strongly recommend this product to you. Absolutely fantastic. So we'll take this clutch away. I'll show you everything step by step. We'll go put it in the ink there and then uh, I'll just wrap this video up, but I'll just talk about a few new things, including my new puppy, another American bully, which I'm super excited 
to share with you, but I'm gonna show her on a future video. She's still settling in, but she's fantastic. So let's uh, crack on and get this clutch taken away. Cheers. Right guys, so we'll take the clutch away from this female now. I do apologize about the camera angle, but I, I haven't got anybody who can uh, basically run the camera for me. So I'll bring you in closer so you can see what I'm doing. Now, initially, what the plan was to do is to put her in a brand new tub with new uh, Repti chip, etc. But I, then I remembered, well, I have to bath her. I have to give her some time bathing to get the smell of eggs away. So what I will do with this female off camera is put her in a bath um, in a tub, a bit like the incubation tub, but larger, with uh, tepid, uh, tepid water. Uh, just let her soak for about 10, 15 minutes. And then I rub uh, some uh, basically non-chemical uh, shower gel. I use Molten Brown, it's very expensive. It's like 22 quid for a small bottle. But I use it on myself and my children use it and I love the smell of it as well. But I just put a little bit of that, that on them, uh, wash it around just to get the scent of eggs away, rinse her off, then I'll set her up. I won't film that bit because it's a little bit boring. It's, you know, it's, it's a snake bathing. But this, because it's a little bit more technical, I'll go back into what I do and why. So as you can see, she's just wrapped around her eggs, uh, protecting them. I'll bring the camera angle in closer. I'm just gonna get the water from the incubator and then show you uh, what I do every step of the way. So because this water sits in the incubator, uh, it's uh, at the perfect temperature. So this is where I'll bring the camera angle in actually. So excuse my purple kettle. <laughs> it's so, <laughs> it's, it, it's so funny having a purple kettle, it's just, the most hideous looking kettle I've ever seen, so I had to buy it. It was cheap, but I had to buy it, so it's just hideous. Uh, it was a joke at the time, and now I can't run with it. So, if you don't use easy hatch trays like the fuser, egg crate, or anything like that, and you are a little bit unsure, so these I use as backups because they're very, very accurate. So I know this uh, vermiculite in here is at the correct 88.5 Fahrenheit, so I checked it before I took it out. So what you do is it's super easy. I have exactly 300 grams of vermiculite in this tub. So I prep them all with 300 grams, no more and no less. So what I do is a one-to-one -one ratio. And what that means, if you don't know, is equal amounts. So 300 grams of vermiculite, 300 grams of water. So I'll bring that in a little closer. So now yeah, you can see. Well, so you pour in, excuse me, but make sure your scales are on grams. If you've measured it in grams, because once that did catch me out and it was in mil, but I realized early on and that was on camera, so you probably have witnessed it. So 253, 278, 291, doesn't have to be millimetre perfect, but 295, sometimes it takes a little bit to settle. 298, my OCD's now telling me just to give it a splash more, so it will be covered drips, literally. 298, still 300, and I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you that. Don't change, please don't change. Uh, so, I'll just take the camera off just for, just for a laugh. So, 300 grams of now, just put that back on there. And the mother is watching me very carefully. So all we need to do now is mix it up. This is where, if you want, you can wear gloves, but my hands are clean, in fact, because I haven't just freshly washed them, I will wear gloves. And the benefit of wearing a glove is you can obviously throw it away and not have little bits of vermiculite on your hands. Um, so it doesn't have to be mixed up exactly perfectly, but you want to just move that sort of damp vermiculite around into the bone dry stuff. Obviously when you're pouring it, you can pour it uh, not just in one place, but it makes no real difference as long as you're going to mix it up. So, uh, this way I did all of 2019 and I'll be doing it all of 2020 because I used to uh, I used to use egg crate 
and I'm a fan of it. I think it's fantastic. I hope you can still see that on the camera. Yeah. So I think it's fantastic. I think it works really, really well. But I just cleaning egg crane with, with, with the egg goo all over it and stuff like that. It was just an extra job, an extra expense. And I thought, Jesus, this it's a one to one ratio. It couldn't really be much easier. So I decided to just go with it. And I'm so, I'm so glad I did. So these uh, egg boxes, they're not true egg boxes, plastic tubs obviously, but um, from like a hardware store, uh, hold uh, moisture very, very well. They, they don't have crazy gas exchange. So I'll just bring her into camera and view. So I'll just see if you can see that. So I don't know what I'll do that. So if you're taking eggs away from a female for the first time, what I do, if you eat them, get struck out, give them some talks on, bring your other hand up and around, tap them on the back of the head, and that just changes their their mind on what they're going to do. So what we oh what a fantastic clutch. So, so that egg's gonna roll, but what a fantastic clutch. So we can see she is empty. She's Fantastic mum, so a pastel heck fan, like I've said, uh, fantastic snake, just absolutely amazing. So I'll just pop her in the next so. so we have got you probably always count them two, four, six, eight. I thought I palpated nine, could have sworn I palpated nine, so I'm gonna double check her. So because these are stuck together, I can uh, keep them stuck together. And then because I've rolled that one, I'm just gonna candle it. Just nussle them down a little bit. Now, this is where obviously that needs a full clean out. You can see she's made a bit of a mess in there. New rest etc. So, yeah, you can see that. So, fantastic clutch, no slugs. It's always, I'd, I'd rather get nine, uh, eight perfect eggs rather than eight perfect eggs and two slugs. Some people say, well, that kind of proves she could lay two more, but she always probably could. So I'm always happy just to get no slugs, no wastage. And slugs are just basically infertile eggs and all you do with them is throw them in the bin or if you've got mo monitors or that, you can feed it to them. So I'll just check. We're good with uh, handling. Uh, I've got a spare icon somewhere. Uh, sorry guys, I didn't really practice with that. I didn't, oh, damn it's run out. Ah well. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll go grab a torch, I might as well do it. And I'm back. Uh, I do apologise that it's not exactly dark in this room, but, so I'm glad I did that. I'm gonna have to take the camera off uh, the tripod for this section, for this little bit. So I hope you can make this out. So you see how that's all yellow? That means that the embryo is not there. So the embryo, what I do is I shake them about there's the embryo. So if you didn't know, I think that's in there. Where is it? It's not that clear, but because the veins are the most densest here, I'll keep that to the top. I can't actually find the embryo. This torch is so thick. You lot thinking just like you, Paul. So I'll try and find a very obvious one. So you can see veins on all of these. Yeah, fantastic. So you met the embryo. Sorry. Make the embryo out on that one. There's the embryo there. So yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight perfect eggs. Uh, they should all hatch just fine. So all you do now is put them in the incubator. Uh, write all your information down. Mother, father, in this case it's two fathers. And then in 58 days, to my temperatures, 88.5, 88.5, in 58 days, uh, we'll have a beautiful clutch of snakes hatching. So you should always carry <laughs> your tubs with two hands if you're not filming. So I'm gonna put that one there because this is the start of the season. I'll put the information there and then fill them all up. I've got the other side. I keep my green sheep pythons uh, water in here so that when I spray them, they're not getting sprayed with cold water. So off camera, I'll uh, fully empty that uh, tub, uh, fully disinfectant it, clean it out, take it back to as close to new as I possibly can. 
bath the female while I'm doing it, she'll be soaking with just clean tepid water. And it's super important that you soak them in clean water because 99 out of 100 times, they're gonna drink some of that water. So don't put any products in there to take the egg smell away from her. When it's time to remove her, if you're choosing to use any sort of products like I sometimes do, I put a little bit of molten brown on my hands. I just rub it around the lower parts of the body, around the cloaca and stuff, then give her a rinse off. And it's, it's at that point, I don't let her head go in the water because I don't want in her eyes or her heat pits. I don't want her to drink the water. So if you're gonna use any products, be very, very careful. And I just rinse it all off and put her back in her kind of new tub, back in the um, rack. And about three to four days later, I offer her her first prey item. And what I do for the very first prey item, uh, I offer her a slightly smaller one, just because it's very taxing uh, developing and laying these eggs on her body. So I don't want to put too much strain on her digestive system. I want her to, to have a couple of days rest, uh, take on fluids and stuff and just rest and then offer her some food. And it's at that point, you don't really need to force them to feed, just offer her food. And if she wants it, she'll take it. If she doesn't, don't be alarmed. Just give her a little bit more time. After say three weeks, if she hasn't uh, eaten, then you can be a little bit concerned, but what you'll find, because it happened to me quite a while ago and it's happened to me twice, uh, actually three times, but twice one female and another, the day the eggs hatch, the day she will act completely different. So she might go back into a coil and in her own head think she's incubating them eggs because I've seen this and I've washed females three and four times and they still go back into that coil. So what I do is I just make sure they've got fresh clean water always and just leave them alone. And the day they hatch, she will literally slither around the tub looking for food. It's, it's quite amazing to witness it because they're over there incubating and hatching and she knows they're actually hatching. I don't know how she knows, but they know. It is absolutely mind blowing and fascinating to witness. So I'm pleased I witnessed that, but I would have rather the female got back on food quicker, just because I, they're just, it's just so taxing on them. You can't feel sorry for them when you see them all deflated. So uh, I'll put her away. Um, I've got loads to share with you, like the puppy and stuff. I'm really looking forward to that. But I'm, I'm super excited to bring you lots and lots of snake. Uh, videos, obviously cutting videos, etc. Because I really think 2020 is going to be the best season for urban constrictors so far. I'm trying to stay in a really positive uh, mindset throughout 2020 because 2017 and 18 was really, really bad for my mental health issues. And I'm trying to be super positive. I'm going to try and better myself. I've joined the gym. So hopefully as the videos go on, you'll see I start to get into shape because I've had my fun eating just crap all the time and I got a bit fat. If you follow my channel for a while, you will have seen towards the end of 2017, or I think it's 17 or 18, yeah, 17. If you go back, you'll see that I shrunk right down and lost a lot of weight because it just, I won't go into detail, but I just wanted to start getting into shape. And then I came back, uh, just got settled and just started eating rubbish again. So now it's time to uh, better myself. So I'm really trying to better myself, improve my lifestyle. So hopefully come the end. So this is gonna be my marker. This is beginning of February, come December, I should be in great shape. Hopefully shared a fantastic season with you. Been very, very positive and upbeat. That's the approach I'm trying to take on everything. Not, not put anybody down, not talk crap on anybody. Just try and be super positive, both inside the reptile hobby and out. And just try and bring a better lifestyle for myself and those around me. So please join me in doing that if, if you've kind of had a hard time, because I know so many of us have. Just try and take 2020 to be a landmark year for you, a really positive one. So in 58 days, you'll see this amazing clutch hatch, but obviously be between now and then, you'll see other videos why. Uh, shoot, and I'll try and think of some creative ones to come up with. So thanks for watching, guys. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If it's been helpful, give it a thumbs up, etc. If you haven't liked it, give it two thumbs down. Hit that dislike button twice. You must hit it twice, because that really reinforces just how much you didn't like it. And if you haven't, haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And because my channel is almost at 4,000 genuine subscribers, nudge, nudge, uh, 4,000 genuine subscribers. And I'm super, super pleased with how it's going on. I've had my break, so now it's trying to get back on the horse and start to smash it again. So I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Thanks, guys.